everybody and welcome along to my list of my top six most favorite directors of all time. Kind of a weird number, I know, but I was going to do a top five list, but I have six on my list and I can't get rid of any of them. Uh, so a while back, uh, I think it was late last year, a friend of mine, hello Tyler if you're watching, suggested to me that I do a list of my favorite directors and it was something that I was deliberating on for a while. Uh, and then forgot about. But recently a friend of mine Chandler over at Langley Productions, another YouTube channel, uh, he did a Q&A video and I asked him what his top five directors were and he gave a really good answer and it sort of inspired me to finally do this list. So I figured what the hell? So these are my top six most favorite directors of all time. Now, keep in mind, they're not the best directors of all time. Like, I know that list would be vastly different. It'd be Spielberg, Scorsese, David Fincher. Like, you know, that's a different list. These are the ones who are my most favorite directors and the ones that have inspired me or influenced me the most in terms of my own directing and filmmaking. And this list is not in order. Like, these are just my top six. Like, it's not from least favorite to most favorite sort of thing. It's just a list of my most favorite directors. So here's number six. Okay, so Quentin Tarantino, I adore everything this guy does. I adore his film geekiness, his encyclopedic knowledge of film. I love that, I mean, the guy almost in a way defined 90s cinema. I love that he's not afraid to uh, make his movies bold and extremely violent. And, and the fact that, you know, he takes things from other movies, you know, he, well, you know, some people say he steals and plagiarizes, but I don't know, he, yeah, he does that, but he also makes it his own, and I really love that about him. I love the fact that his characters can sit for, like, 20 minutes just dialoguing, and it's still interesting. I mean, the guy's writing, in my opinion, is absolutely brilliant. Every word that comes out is kind of fascinating. But not only that, you know, sometimes the characters will say things that are just realistic. You know, sometimes when you have a screenplay, characters don't really talk the way they do in the real world, whereas Tarantino's characters quite often do. And he just makes the dialogue sound so freaking cool. Not only that, his casting is always so on point. I love that, you know, he can revive the careers of actors who have, you know, supposedly washed up and make them relevant again. Uh, his movies are always exciting and I always can't wait to see what he's going to do next. And those are the reasons that I love Quentin Tarantino. Next up. So Sam Raimi got his start with his Evil Dead movies and they were amazing. They changed the scape of horror movies uh, in so many ways. They were these ultra low budget movies that you know, I, I mean, I, I love uh, in the behind the scenes of, I think it was the first Evil Dead, they were shooting inside the cabin and because it was in the daytime, they had to make it nighttime. So, you know, they just draped black cloths outside the windows. You know, it was all just such inventive and creative ways to overcome problems. And I love that about his films. They're always so hyperkinetic. I love that He's one of these directors that, you know, if you watch one of his movies, you can tell it's a Sam Raimi movie just because of the way he moves his camera, the way that he has all these sort of strange Dutch angles and zooms and all these weird things. Most of the time, there are some of his movies that were a little bit more mainstream, but that was another thing I liked about him. You know, he didn't just pigeonhole himself into the horror genre. He branched out and did all these other movies, and that was really cool about him. And I love the fact that the guy always wears a suit and tie as a tribute to Alfred Hitchcock. Um, you know, it's one of those things where he's not afraid to let his influences come out, and I, I dig it. And he also does a lot of work, not just directing, but producing as well. You know, I mean, he was responsible for the American remake of the Japanese horror movie The Grudge. And I also love that he sort of, you know, has these little Easter eggs in all of his films that, that you know, are sort of a, a Sam Raimi staple. So, yeah, those are some reasons why I love Sam Raimi. And next up we have... Now, I know Kevin Smith's career has shifted somewhat over the years from his start that he got in the 90s where 
you know, I mean, God, his films in the 90s were so much part of that era. I love 90s cinema and his movies then were just such amazing snapshots of that time. And through the years, yeah, his movies have become progressively weirder and, you know, just not your typical Kevin Smith movies. But, you know, maybe that's not such a bad thing. I mean, you know, it's good to diversify and not just make the same thing over throughout your career. But there are two main reasons why I'm including Kevin Smith in this list. For one, I loved how back in the 90s before he sort of became too big, he was really interactive online with his fans. You know, when the internet was relatively new, he and Jason Mewes would get on and chat with us and it was really amazing that we actually got to speak to these people. And I loved the you know, he sort of did these spoken word tours or Q&As where he, someone would ask him a question and he'd spend like 40 minutes giving an answer, but they were always really entertaining. And I guess I like that he became a bit more than just a writer-director. But the main reason I'm including him on this list is because Clerks, his first film that he ever did, is pretty much the reason that I became a filmmaker. I remember watching that film on VHS when it first came out and it just fascinated me that he achieved so much with so little. This film was just, it was set in a convenience store where he worked and, you know, they filmed it after hours and it was basically a lot of dialogue and funny scenarios, but it was just centered around these sort of two main characters in this one location and they really nailed it. They achieved so much with that film and I watched that thinking to myself at the time that you needed millions of dollars to make a movie, but you really didn't. And that was such a healthy dose of inspiration for me. All right, moving right along, here is number three. Robert Rodriguez is another filmmaker who was pretty much responsible for me wanting to become a filmmaker. Uh, especially in terms of the fact that this guy is like a one-man film crew. I took that model of filmmaking and it really inspired me to learn every facet of the process from writing, directing, editing, camera operating, director of photography -ing, even creating music. Like, I just love that this man does everything and I mean he's just his movies are so freaking cool uh, starting off with you know his early like mariachi and desperado stuff like that uh, the whole sort of you know Tex-Mex flavor to his films and the guy was a freaking pioneer of certain special effects I mean you look at the Sin City movies that were filmed 95% against a green screen and everything added in later uh, you know this guy just does so many inventive creative things and if you you've ever read his book Rebel Without a Crew which was the diary he kept throughout the making of his first feature film El Mariachi it is it's it's like my bible of filmmaking um especially because of the way he you know if a problem comes along with making of his films instead of throwing a bunch of money at it and you know making it go away he figures out ways to creatively get around things and that's something i've always done especially because i don't have a lot of money to make movies you know if something comes along and it a shot doesn't work or whatever and you need to fix it up somehow there's always a creative way around things and yeah it was a really good inspiration for putting my mind to things and and yeah just coming up with different ideas and if you've ever seen any of his dvds and blu-rays my god the film schools that he has on the uh, on the extra features man you can learn so much from these things this guy always takes the time out to inspire future filmmakers and he's a really good role model in terms of young upcoming filmmakers you can learn so much from this guy and yeah he's a really big influence on me as a filmmaker and coming in at number two we have So you'd probably think the way that I've been going on about this guy lately that he would have been my number one. But like I said, these aren't in order. But look, Edgar Wright is definitely the flavor of the month. This guy, again, he's one of these filmmakers who you can watch one of his movies and you know it is one of his movies. He has invented his own unique style and that is such an important thing for a director to do. And my God, he has invented something that no one has ever done before. 
and it is all of his own and I hate him for that because I want to make movies like that but I can't because then people are going to go you're just ripping off Edgar Wright and I'm going to be like yep that's what I'm doing. I love the fact that Edgar Wright, even though he's a British filmmaker, he's taken all these US, you know, popcorn movie genres and kind of made them British movies in a way. Uh, I mean, you take Shaun of the Dead, like, you know, it's sort of a Hollywood zombie movie, but with a British flavor. The same with Hot Fuzz. You got a buddy cop movie that has been British guys. But his movies are always so funny and entertaining and there is never a dull moment throughout the entire runtime of his films and the guy just seems like a really nice guy. I love watching interviews with him and the way that people just keep analyzing his films and everything like yeah I just love his stuff. I probably don't really need to explain why I love his movies because yeah, if you're watching movie related channels on YouTube, chances are you love Edgar Wright as much as I do and that's why he's on my list. So last, but definitely not least... I've been a fan of James Gunn since 2004 when the Dawn of the Dead remake came out and I saw in the credits written by James Gunn and I was just like thinking to myself, far out, man, this guy has written a really amazing movie. And then I found out that he was responsible for the Scooby-Doo movies. He'd written them as well. And I became really fascinated with him and I started following him on MySpace. Yeah, that's how far back we're going. And again, he was one of these people that before he became really big, he would engage with his fans a lot. And I ended up having conversations with him, found out that we had a mutual admiration of supermodel Josie Marin. And I mean, even today, he still interacts with his fans, which is just awesome. I mean, this guy, you know, I wouldn't really say he's an A-list director, but he's pretty close to, and he still takes the time out to interact with the fans, and that is really, really amazing. I find that so admirable when people, you know, just realize, look, Hollywood directors are just people too, you know? Yeah, sure, they've got pretty high-profile jobs, and they're very glamorous jobs, but at the end of the day, you know, this is a guy that just loves playing with his dog, hanging out with his girlfriend and eating sushi. But in terms of what I love about his movies, I love that he does things differently. Uh, and that was one thing I loved about the fact that he was attached to the first Guardians of the Galaxy. You know, I mean, it wasn't your typical Marvel movie in so many ways. And you watch a lot of his other films and yeah, he always does weird things. He's got a really quirky sense of humor. If you guys really want to see how quirky this guy can be, check out his PG porn series. <laughs> I'm not kidding. They are up there with my most favorite works of his. Also, there's a, I think it was a three-part series called Human Z, which again is just so freaking weird and I love it. And if you ever get a chance, check out, there was a book that he wrote called The Toy Collector, which was a really great read. I mean, that's the thing, you know, this guy, yeah, yeah, he does a lot of diverse stuff, not just filmmaking. I think that's probably James Gunn's greatest strength is in his writing. Uh, I mean, yeah, he is a great director, don't get me wrong, but I mean, the fact that he can do screenplays or novels or anything, like, yeah, and he's a good influence on me as well in terms of writing because I can be a bit of a lazy writer sometimes, so, uh, you know, anytime I'm feeling like I've got a bit of a creative block happening, I can throw on a movie from any one of these directors and it always inspires me, and yeah, I love all of his movies. Looking forward to everything he does in the future, I'm a big fan. And so that concludes my list of my most favorite directors working today. Who knows? down the track someone else might come along who makes it into the list and kicks out somebody I don't know who but here's my question to you guys what are your favorite film directors if you don't have a top five you can just name whoever you want drop me some comments down below I'd love to get a discussion going as far as directors because yeah I'm one of these people I can probably more readily name my favorite directors than I can favorite movies. So let me know what your thoughts are. Drop me some comments either here or on Facebook. All the social media links are down in the description below because I like to talk about movies and I would love to talk about movies with you. I'll catch you next time. Click subscribe to stay up to date with all the latest movie reviews. Skynet will be taking over any day now. So what have you got to lose? Nyah.